How's it going everybody? Today is the first part of uh, writing tic-tac-toe app in Flutter. I know I talked about Flutter, it's a cross-platform framework for developing Android and iOS applications, native applications, in a Dart programming language. Most likely everything here is uh, gonna be new for you. I'm not gonna create an introduction to Flutter or how to set it up because the official doc is pretty great. It's in a text format, but I don't think uh, there is any need for duplicating uh, it in a video format. So the question comes, why Flutter? And in cross-platform development, there, is, there isn't much choice. Web-based uh, frameworks are out of the choice in JavaScript because it's just stupid. And uh, basically you have an uh, Xamarin, React Native and uh, Flutter. I don't think there is uh, another framework. And React Native is out of the choice for me because it's in JavaScript. I hate JavaScript. I just need a real programming language that I can rely on with the safe types and uh, everything. And Xamarin, I've never built applications with Xamarin, but, but from what I read, uh, Xamarin is a much worse experience and uh, it's much slower. So. Basically, if you want to write cross cross platform applications in a language that's something similar to Java or Kotlin, Flutter is for you. So let's just tackle the basic stuff a little bit. I mean, the differences that you're gonna face and like the, f the biggest struggle that uh, I faced. Tic Tac Toe is like my to do app for uh, learning frameworks. I learned uh, JavaFX with it, I learned Android development with it, and now. I'm now it's uh, my introduction to Flutter, so because it's uh, pretty basic, let me show it how it looks. It's pretty basic, but it's not boring as uh, displaying some lay stupid layouts and uh, fetching data from internet. Plus, uh, there is gonna be also a multiplayer with Firebase, so it's gonna be fun. There is gonna be two steps at least in uh, this series. So the first obstacle for you is gonna be Dart, right? I mean, personally, I have no problem with uh, learning new languages. It's just, I mean, that's just how the software development world works. Everybody wants to create new languages every day, almost. <laughs> Luckily, it's uh, pretty close to Java. Some, something in between Java, JavaScript, and uh, some Python syntax, as you see in uh, file naming those underscores. So in general, uh, I had an Android tic-tac-toe app and uh, I just, really, I just uh, copied the whole f logic uh, from Java and just pasted it in here. So there wasn't really much syntax errors. I just uh, had to fix very little. And in general, I pretty enjoy Dart. The only thing that I hate and I think uh, really stupid is that they don't have uh, visibility keywords and you have to pay a append uh, underscore in the beginning of a variable name to make it private. By default, all the variables are public. I think it's just stupid and uh, it's like going back to the 70s when there wasn't any types and you declared types in the variables, in the variable names like that. You They would declare types in like those ancient languages. And I don't get it, why would you stick back to that? I mean, why don't we just get rid of all the keywords and return values for functions and just declare everything in the variable names? Doesn't make sense for me, but in general, Dart is pretty nice. And uh, yeah, you cannot use Kotlin or any other language uh, by now in Flutter development. All right, the second obstacle is gonna be a Flutter framework for you. The hardest thing I've found is to build layouts. There isn't XML format supported for binning layouts, so everything goes in uh, Dart files, in a Dart syntax. So, for example, this is an, an example of layout in Flutter. So everything is in Dart, and that's not the problem. The problem is that they created some nested hell layout building experience that I really hate. For example, Android framework with the constraint layout is kind of uh, like moving towards flat layout, right? But in Flutter, they're on on completely different page. They don't they don't like the flat layouts, or I don't know, is it the performance uh, solution or something else? 
but uh, as you see from here it's really deep nested and that's just a basic layout let me just tackle a bit a bit for example some views uh, in flutter they're called widgets some views don't have on click listener so you cannot set an on click listener for text text is the text view in android so here is a text and you see they call it on press listener here and text doesn't have a on press listener you need to wrap it in uh, some other widget like for example material button or gesture detector and other stuff let me show you for example here just to have those uh, clickable text views here that are just simply using some custom font which i downloaded you need to wrap it in a material button so that's just doesn't make sense for me maybe it's just cleaner solution under the hood but for a end user developer it's just hell and uh, they kind of try to solve it by providing two tabs uh, code styling it really doesn't solve the problem also some views don't have padding attributes you need to wrap your view in a container just to give you your view margin or padding and uh, you also cannot set the background color on views you need to wrap it in a container as well what other things well yeah you cannot set uh, width or height to much parent you need to wrap it in a expanded widget again so you see there is lots of wrapping which uh, i don't like at all also you, yeah over here aspect ratio you cannot set there is no such attribute on widgets as aspect ratio right so for example in android they would have a an attribute starting with layout underscore and something like aspect ratio right this attribute would go for for the, the layout to handle in here there isn't such attributes on widgets uh, if you want to delegate some uh, work to the layout you need to wrap your widget in another widget which is which makes this nesting and that's you get to extract your layout blocks into different functions so that it doesn't look that nested and uh, unreadable but despite all these obstacles it, it's a cross-platform framework it uh, performs great it uh, looks great and it's in a relatively nice programming language which uh, is strongly typed i'm using uh, version 1.0 which has uh, optional types but actually android studio enables that uh, by default so you have your strong types already enabled right and today i'm gonna explain how to create a single mod game let's start with the entry point it's it's uh, your basically application is your android manifest some kind of we declare the launcher activity here and uh, routes would be to the it's an array of other activities you would declare other activities but uh, i'm having just one activity now let's call it uh, screen or yeah let's call it a screen because it as you see everything in flutter is a widget so and then we have a stateful widget there are stateful and stateless widgets which uh, i don't quite understand uh, the difference yet but uh, let's ignore that and then for a stateful widget you would uh, create a child of state of game type this in the in the game state i build all the layouts and all the interactions so you see uh, layouts come in this file and logic dart logic comes here as well so it's not forced by flutter framework like with android xml to have a clean architecture you gotta come up with, with the solutions yourself to extract layouts if it's possible to other files and have your logic in, in other ones because right let's go through the layout first all right here's the root of the layout it's called scaffold and there is an app bar over here with the title and a body this one 
Again, you see there isn't uh, a uh, layout gravity in Flutter, so you need to wrap your widget in a center widget to have it centered on a screen. Stack is like a frame layout in Android. So I have three basic children overlaying each other and uh, all of them are having this square size. First goes grid, which are two vertical and two horizontal lines, then goes nine buttons, and then there's a line drawn on top of everything. Let's just go through all those children one by one. Aspect ratio of one to give it a square size, and then there is again a stack for overlay overlaying lines. Column is like a linear layout with vertical orientation. Row is a the same with horizontal orientation and there you can give the weight for children like default space evenly so that they're they are positioned with the same weight right and here's uh, how i create this line it's a container in android it's like a bare view i can set margin here it's just this margin small margin to give it a nicer look, a color and height. This horizontal line, vertical has a width and it's expanded by default to the width or height. All right, that was the grid. Then over this goes my field. Same aspect ratio of one to give it a square size. The root is gonna be column and then there's rows inside of each one. Same space evenly to Give it to the same weight and row is uh, yeah just horizontal linear layout and here's my clickable text view or cell aspect ratio of one again to expand it to the whole size i didn't figure out yet how to just create a, a text view which expands to the whole size because in android you would just create a a simple text view there isn't gonna be any nesting and here I have one two three three layers just to have a text view and it has this inkish uh, background which I don't want I'll try to remove it later here I've uh, declared a custom font which I put over there in the fonts directory and this text size is 82, yeah. I mean, basically it's really close to Android, but uh, with a little bit of struggle you're gonna face the first time you're building complex layouts. After that, I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy developing in Flutter. And uh, for each build cell function, I pass row and column attributes for on press listener. This way I have a field to set the, to update the field array so dart doesn't have to de arrays they only have lists maps uh, sets and other thing i don't remember and here's how you declare a 2d array or 2d list of strings i prefer to use types you can just write in the where keyword but just in the beginning for learning the language framework i prefer to use explicit types in everything you see here so it's really close to java syntax but you could uh, write everything like that all right here's the unclick listener and the nice thing about flutter is that uh, the reactivity implemented here with set state function under this states state so you don't need to call a set text manually on each view like in android here's how i display characters on text views so text uh, takes a data argument as a string and that's a reference to the field cell from uh, this to the list over here and I just update it on clicks 
set it to the character which is an X for player so when clicked on the cell I just update the field and text is reflected automatically because I wrap it in a set state function if I don't wrap it the change in field is not going to be reflected and now let's go through how I draw lines this was actually the best experience with Flutter because Canvas uh, API is uh, identical to Android or really close. I didn't have to read like much of documentation, just the boilerplate code I copied from the doc and the rest I figured out myself how to. Here is this class, but first let me show you in the layout. Same aspect ratio to give this canvas a square size and there goes a custom paint and you provided a painter you gotta implement custom painter and the whole thing goes in the paint which is uh, something like on draw on android so to draw a horizontal line you have a canvas here and I initiate a paint with the stroke width cap same as in Android. And then if somebody won, I use canvas draw line function and yeah, it's really simple. How this class detects the changes is that I provide a victory class, which is uh, those uh, fields, row, column, line type and uh, winner. And every time I call set state, this uh, victory lines paint function is triggered and uh, this block is running to check if there is a line to be drawn. All right, I think it wraps the single mode. AI is uh, really basic that you would write the same in Java. It's just a bunch of if statements. Victory checker, the same is a function that checks if, if somebody won. Same bunch of if statements. Yeah, that's it for today. You can get the source code on GitHub. Link is gonna be in the description. Here it is. Uh, but you're gonna have to set up Flutter. It's really simple. What you need is uh, just an Android SDK if you wanna do write for Android only, and uh, copy Flutter uh, repository, and just compile it, and that's it. Pretty easy. And here's the iOS version. Right again, and in the next step, I'm gonna show you how to create a multiplayer with Firebase. It's gonna be lots of fun. So click like if you liked it, subscribe, I'll talk to you later.